What's going on, everybody? It's Cooper and James, and we are from the back pens. It's been a busy Sunday for me. I've been up since 4 a.m. to get to uh, the airport to jump on one of those big uh, big birds to get down here to Fort Worth. Just kind of hanging out today, so I figured we'd get a preview show done today. James, how are you doing on Mother's Day? Oh, I'm just tickled pink. I mean, watching the Velocity Finals and doing all that just yesterday and i haven't got much time to spend with my mom today because she's with my sister most of the day but hey man that's the way it is and it's just we're ready to roll i'm looking forward to the final so much that i can't wait to see what happens yeah the velocity finals concluded on saturday night in corpus christi there's some guys that punched their ticket to the world finals there this coming week in fort worth and of course, Friday night, the world finals kick off in the Dickies Arena. So there's a lot to talk about. There's been some shuffling in those world standings over the weekend. So we've got a lot to talk about. So grab them slides, boys, because we're coming at you from the back pins. <laughs> So to kick things off, let's talk about the top five finishers from the Velocity Tour finals there in Corpus Christi. Your winner, 178 on two head. He earned 82 world points, Cody Jesus. Cody's a guy that can definitely dress him up when he's on, but sometimes he can be really streaky. It's good to see Cody with some momentum going into the world finals this coming week. In second, Clayton Sellers, 176 on two head. He earned 59 and a third points over the weekend, and that'll be big in that rookie of the year race. Although Bob Mitchell didn't have himself a bad weekend either. Dalen Swearingen comes in third, 174 and a half on two head. He earned 41 and a third points. Fourth place, Josh Frost, 173 and a half on two. He earned 26 and a half world points. Now, James, this is a guy I know you were in on at the velocity finals and you were pretty confident he was going to punch his ticket to the world finals. And that's exactly what he did. The only thing that that went wrong was I was pretty sure he was going to ride all three bulls, but yeah, he punched his ticket. And now depending on, you know, how healthy he is. And I seen a social media post that he pulled an all nighter from Corpus Christi to Gaiman, Oklahoma for the rodeo today at three o'clock. So and then from there to Fort Worth, but that's, he's used to that because he's done the pro rodeo trail and all that. But, you know, that you might as well throw him in the rookie of the year race now with the amount of points that are up. Yeah, really anybody who has rookie status, it's a wide open race by the finals. It's like that every year. If you're riding good and you get bulls rode there, you've definitely got a shot at that title, no doubt. And rounding out the top five at 46 years old, Ed and I, Kameen Haas, 173 on two head, 21 and a half world points earned. He also punched his ticket to Fort Worth. And uh, why don't we just go ahead and get that list out of the way right now? Your five Velocity Tour competitors that earned their invites to the world finals are Brandon Davis, Casey Coulter, Josh Frost, Ed and I, Kameen Haas, and Alex Cardozo. And just looking at Ed and I at 46 years old, I mean, that is really old to still be riding bulls at all, let alone this kind of level of bull riding. For a guy to be able to do that, that's pretty incredible to me. He's got to be the most mentally tough person that is going up and down the road right now, other than maybe Vin Johns, but Vin just had a little, little rough luck at the velocity final, but Ed Nade's a world champion for a reason, and uh, they don't just hand those to you. But, yeah, usually Father Time catches up with you, but he looked great through both the rounds that I seen him. He just didn't get one road in the championship round, but really nobody did. The one that came the closest was Cody Jesus, but it didn't matter at that point. All he had to do was make the whistle. But Ed Nade's kind of a – Amazing thing to see what he can do. And there's always a dark horse coming in that nobody expects to win the finals. I'm not saying he's going to do that by no means, but there's a chance that he could make a pile of money and surprise a lot of people. Yeah, it's anybody's ball game at the world finals. 
There's a lot of money up for grabs, a lot of world points, all that. It really comes down to who can stay mentally the strongest, I feel like, over all the rounds of competition. There's more rounds this year. There's going to be eight rounds this year, which they used to do back 10, 12 years ago-ish in that kind of mid to late early 2000s era. They kind of went away from it, but it's going to be a marathon down there this year. Eight rounds of competition with the level of buck and bulls that are out there right now. It is not going to be easy on guys. And if you come into that deal banged up, it's going to be a long couple of weekends for you because the bull power is never going to weaken there. That's for sure. And something to bring up, speaking of the eight round format, I believe that J.B. Mooney is the only man to ever go eight for eight in that format. Can somebody else catch him and can somebody else beat whatever his total was? That's that's something that no. I'm going to be looking at. They're not. The Bulls are too good right now. If someone goes eight for eight, I'll take a big fat L on that one, but I don't see it happening. I Realistically, in my opinion, I think five or six scores is going to give you a pretty good chance to win this deal. And that might even be a little high. It's, yeah. it's a pretty stout bull list down there. So there are three draft rounds at the world finals this year. Those are going to be in rounds two, five, and seven. And the unique part about the first weekend here is the first night's going to be your classic bulls. That's notoriously known as one of the harder rounds out there at the finals. Cause all those bulls are going to buck. You're going to have a chance every time the gate opens, these guys should have a chance to win the round on them, which is always a good thing. But if you fail in that classic round, you're really going to hurt yourself when it comes time to draft your bull in round two. And without seeing that bull list, generally they do the rank pen in the second night. And I do know that the bulls, the rank pen are the ones that are going for the world title, the bull of the year. They're going three times. I can't remember exactly what number rounds they are, but I would guess that it's probably round two. But the good thing about that is whenever you head into a draft round format like that, whether you did good or whether you come in last, you know those bulls. It's not like it's a guessing game. But at this at this point, you pretty much know the classic bulls too because they've been going all year as well. But to have an opportunity to win a go-round by – possibly drafting a, a world champion buck and bull contender or someone right there at it is uh, pretty impressive. And why not go for first? Yeah, there's a lot of money. Definitely. It really motivates a guy to go out there and try to win every single time the gate opens, which is what these guys do anyways. But there's a little extra incentive out there because essentially winning a round is pretty comparable to what it pays to win a regular season event. So these guys can win a lot of money down here this next two weekends in Fort Worth, and I'm excited to see it. But let's move into the world title races a little bit. And James, you had predicted this, and your prediction came to fruition. We have a new number one. Dale and Swearingen moves to the number one spot. He's just a shade under nine points ahead of JRV. So that is razor tight at the top two. You didn't see Kaike and Jose at the Velocity Finals, which I was a little surprised that Kaike didn't ride there, but he must have wanted to heal up or rest up a little bit before this next these next two weekends of competition. But James, Dalen's the guy. What do you think about him being the number one bull rider going into the World Finals? I think that's good for JRV because now the pressure's off. Now all he's got to do is go ride his bulls and not worry about that. If he was feeling any pressure going into the velocity finals and whatever, trying to gain ground, that pressure's off. He just got to go ride bulls and let the chips fall where it may. Now, Dalen's a guy that's just as talented or he wouldn't be in the spot that he's in. But the, the problem with both of them, though, is they're one directional nine times out of ten. Yes, they definitely are a lot better on bulls that go into their hand. And even when they do ride bulls away from their hand, well, not so much Dalen, but JRV especially, like you're not going to see a monster score. Like it'll probably be about 85 to 86 points. Nothing against JRV. That's just not his strength. That's not his strong suit. What he's done has been pretty dang successful this year. 
which is basically riding about everything that goes to the left. And he rides a handful of them that go to the right. So for a guy like that, the draft rounds are crucial. And you can bet if he gets a good pick, he is going to pick a bull that he thinks is going to go left or expects to go left. And so for guys like that, yeah, it is harder when you have to go through those random draw rounds, be successful to set yourself up. Because if you leave bulls that you can get along with, if you're a left-handed bull rider like JRV, him and Jose Vitor Leme are going to get along with the same type of bulls. If you leave the good ones that you want for Jose, it can be a long week watching him go 90 every time the gate opens. Yes, sir. And he's had a shortened season even more so than the rest of the guys because of injuries. And he's still number four in the world. And mathematically, he's still got a chance. Mathematically, I think 17 or 18 guys still have a chance. I don't know the exact number, but if you think about it, the number one guy in the world has earned the most points, obviously, but still, it's probably nearly impossible. But if you were to sweep the finals, you would earn more at the finals than, than the number one guy has in the entire year. You know, to, to go have that opportunity, that's what we're talking about, about it being anybody's ball game. And that's where the rookie of the year race gets more exciting. And I think also the bull of the year race gets more excited when they add in another round for the bucket bulls of the year too. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second, but I got to put you on the spot, James. If you had to place a hundred dollars right now on who's going to walk away from Fort Worth, Texas as the 2022 PBR world champion, who are you putting that hundred dollars on? Kaiki Pacheco. Gabe Cooper's looking at me like, what? Because I am I not. I think he could easily win. No, that's not what I mean. Because I'm always on the Jose Vitor Lime bandwagon, and I still am. I think he's the only other one within the top four that has a legitimate chance, but I just don't know how healthy he is coming into the finals. So that's why my money's on, on Kaiki Pacheco because direction does not matter. The only thing that matters with him is if he keeps his chin tucked and doesn't get that curve kind of in his back and keeps his back straight, keep his chin tucked and doesn't get his feet up behind him. He'll ride everything he gets on. Yeah, that's a solid pick. Kaike is really fundamentally sound, like you said, when he doesn't get that C in his back. Sometimes he does get a little bit of a C in there, but when he sits up and does it right, left, right, hard to track, it does not matter. He can stick them all. Well, I suppose I can't take the easy route, James, and just side with you and pick Kaike. So you really leave me with one guy I think that stands out, and it's not disrespectful to the guys that are ahead of him right now. Even though I'm not sure if he's 100% healthy, I got to go with Jose Vitor Leme. This guy is a machine. The moment is not too big for this guy ever. He lives for the big moments. He doesn't disappoint. And I think he's been tested this year, more so than in the past. He's been banged up quite a few times in this condensed season. He's came back and made some big time rides. He hasn't been as dominant as we've seen in previous seasons. He's definitely had some rough patches and bucked off bulls that I didn't think he should have. But at the end of the day, if I have to put a hundred dollars on it, I just can't, I can't bet against the two time defending world champ. And I think he makes it three times in a row, which would put him in the record books I mean, this guy, in my opinion, unless he gets hurt bad to the point where it ends his career really early, I'm going to say it right here. I think he's going to go down as the greatest of all time. The guy is just a machine. That's all I have to say. He is, and that's what I was kind of joking with Cooper about. Obviously, you guys can't see what I see, but me and Cooper kind of go back and forth uh, sometimes when we're talking about or www.rankridefantasy picks. You know, I'm always on the J, uh, the Jose V. Torleme wagon. And for, for me to pick Kaiki Pacheco, the only reason I did was because of the groin injury and the fact that he's had so many injuries this year. And if he's healthy and wants to win another world title, though, I don't see anybody catching him. But Coop, while we're still talking about the world title race, why don't we each pick a sleeper? Heck yeah, I'll go first because I know this guy is not going to back down from any bull. 
Doesn't matter if they run in Liston. They could run in Godzilla, and this guy's going to go go to him. I don't think he's extremely one-directional, and when he's tapped off, he can make it look really good. If I had to pick a, a sleeper, Dalton Castle. I think he's tough. He can withstand the punishment and come back and give give a good effort the next day. I think he can ride any type of bull when he's on his game. So if I had to pick somebody from outside that top four, Dalton Castle all day long. And I, I tend to agree with you, but since since you didn't take the easy route, I won't either. I'll go with Vastfinder because maybe he'll find that same momentum and realize, hey, it's the PBR finals. I did really, really well here last year, change of venue, but that shouldn't matter. And, you know, he's been to the national finals rodeo. He's been everywhere there is to, to be at the highest level of bull riding, and he's extremely, extremely tough. It's just whether, whether he wants to win or not, and uh, it's between his ears. If he can get that straightened out, then he'll be a contender as well. A seasoned veteran like Eli isn't going to worry about how big the stage is, what bulls he draws. And Eli's just as talented as anybody else. Like you said, if he stays out of his own way, I could see that too. I don't hate that pick at all. But let's transition here to the bull of the year standings. Now, there were, there were not any moves over the weekend, obviously. None of these bulls bucked at the velocity finals. The standings are the same as they were in our last episode after Billings, Montana. So, James. If you have to pick out of the whole field for bull of the year, who gets it done in Fort Worth over the next two weeks? My heart tells me riding solo, but my brain tells me whoop off. Just because can Cord get three clean outs on that bull? That's what it's going to come down to, in my opinion. Yeah, that's been that bull's downfall all year. Um, I think he's had days where he looks as rank as anything I've ever seen before. But like you said, he has been fouled up a lot coming out of them bucking shoots, and that's going to hurt a bull if he does that down in Fort Worth. So I don't know. It's really tough to call. I think, honestly, you could flip a coin between Whoopaw and riding solo. I Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. My heart says riding solo, but Whoopaw's just consistent. Even his bad days, which he doesn't have very many bad days, but they're still good. They're still like 45, 45 and a half. He's rarely under 45 and his good days can be, I mean, astronomical 47 plus. So it's hard to bet against him. I'll agree with you there. If I had to pick a bull from outside those two, because they have kind of a decent lead over the rest of the field. If I'm picking a dark horse bull, I got to go with Jag metals, grand theft. I just think this bull's gotten better and better as the years have gone on. The guys don't have a lot of success on him, and he's so big and strong when he does buck guys off, it's usually spectacular. He usually sends them flying or slams them pretty hard. I think he's underrated, and if I had to pick a dark horse, it'd be Jake Metal's Grand Theft. What about you, James? Uh, I'd probably go with Pookie Holler. That bull just, he's ranked, and... uh... The highest score I think I've seen on him on him this year, though, was about a 46. I'm sure he's had higher marks than that, but that's the that's the one I can remember the most. And so uh, we'll go with that one. Kaiki wrote him. If memory served me right, that might have been a 15-15 bucking battle when Kaiki wrote him. I don't really recall, to be honest. But I know Kaiki wrote him, and there's been a lot of guys try him, and they're all handfuls. Yeah, those are respectable picks, James, no doubt about it. But I think now we'll transition to the rank ride fantasy portion of this podcast. And it's going to be a little bit shorter today just because we didn't have a rank ride event over the weekend. And until we see what the draw is, there's not a lot of info we can give you. So we're going to give you what we can, but it'll be shorter today. And we're also going to go over some PBR draft stuff since that's basically just a shade over two weeks away. Rank Ride Fantasy Bull Riding is free to play in 2022. Make your picks for PBR riders and bulls and get in on the action. The year-end champion will receive a VIP trip for two to PBR World Finals in Fort Worth, Texas and a custom Rank Ride Bragging Rights buckle. Follow Rank Ride Facebook. 
And keep up with great giveaways on the Rank Ride Fantasy Instagram page. Rank Ride Fantasy, your connection to the Western lifestyle you love. Sign up to play free at rankridefantasy.com. You can find more about Rank Ride Fantasy at www.rankridefantasy.com, at Rank Ride Fantasy on Instagram, Rank Ride on Facebook, and Rank Ride TV on YouTube. And also, I guess I forgot, at Rank Ride on TikTok as well now. I'm sure a lot of you, if you've listened to us before, know how the game works, but it's pretty simple. Pick six riders, three bulls, highest total score over the event wins. They are going to have an event for the world finals, and it's going to be tricky. We don't know much about it, so we're not going to get too crazy on it, but eight rounds of competition. It's going to be survival of the fittest out there, and I think just looking at it from an outside perspective without knowing the bulls are getting on earlier in the week, I'm looking for guys that I think are consistent and ride bulls that go both ways. And most likely you're going to find that in the top tier, but you may not find that in tier three. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be some sleeper picks though there for sure. It's just tough to say right now, but the good news is, is rank ride is having an event and this one's a big one. I believe there's a buckle on the line for this one that goes to the winner. So there's definitely incentive to go play. And it's going to make your world finals experience that much more exciting when you've got the skin in the game and you're going to put your neck out there and make your picks. You're either going to succeed or you're going to fail. And then at the end of the day, it falls back on you. So it's going to be a exciting couple of weeks for rank ride players. I know, James, you're pretty pumped up about it. It just adds to your excitement for the world finals, right? Oh, yeah. And, and mathematically, I still have a shot at two buckles. And so do you, for that matter, with eight rounds and whatever, just depends on what the people do in front of us. I do think there's going to be injuries and guys that have to set out a couple of rounds just based on the bull power. And, you know, that's typical of the world finals. I'm sure they have alternates for the world finals, but we won't have alternates for rank ride. We'll just be, we'll just be out of luck there. So just kind of pick the best you can as far as, the healthiest guys you can that you think are going to ride the most bulls because that's really all you can do at this point. Yeah, that's a good point, James, to kind of close this little segment out because I might be a little more hesitant to pick a guy I think is pretty banged up going in there because like you said, I know they get that week off or I guess it's not a full week. Well, three days, I guess, technically, because it starts back up Thursday. So they get three days off in between, but that's not really a lot of time to heal. And the bull power, like you mentioned, it's going to be top notch. So if you are banged up, it's going to be a long two weekends for you. That is going to play a factor in my picks for sure. I want guys that are healthy going in there because the last thing you need is a guy going in there beat up. He gets on his first two and now he's out for the rest of the finals. That doesn't do you any good in this competition. So that's a really good point. But let's talk about this PBR team series draft here a little bit. You know, we haven't talked a lot about this, but it's on its way here. We're a little over two weeks away at the time of recording here, and I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be really, really cool. The draft order was set back in January with the first pick, the Austin Gamblers, and they are led by Michael Gaffney. The second pick, Nashville Stampede. They are led by Justin McBride. Third pick, the Texas Rattlers, Cody Lambert. The fourth pick is going to be the Kansas City Outlaws, led by J.W. Hart. Fifth pick, Missouri Thunder, which is going to be led by Luke Snyder and Ross Coleman. The sixth pick, the Arizona Ridge Riders, which is led by Colby Yates and Paulo Krimber. The seventh pick goes to the Carolina Cowboys, led by Jerome Davis. And the eighth pick... Oklahoma Freedom, they are led by Cord McCoy, former guest on the show. It's a snake draft. So what that means is the Austin Gamblers are going to have the first overall pick, and then they'll go down the list. And then when round two starts, the Oklahoma Freedom are going to start round two. So if you look at it mathematically, there's 16 picks in the first two rounds. The Gamblers will have one in 16, whereas the Freedom will have eight and nine. So that's an interesting little deal that they did. That's a little different than the NFL and MLB draft. Those are linear drafts where the order stays the same every round. James, if you were sitting in that number one spot, 
if you're the the general manager of the Austin Gamblers, who are you taking number one overall in this draft? Depending on how healthy he is and what he shows in the finals, I think it'd be like coming into the number one spot in the draft and having Rupaul there and not not picking him as far as the Bulls. But I think you go with Jose Vitor Lime, depending on what he shows at the finals and how healthy he is and so on and so forth. Yeah, I would say he's definitely a, a pretty heavy favorite to probably be number one, but I think there's a couple guys that could sneak up in there like Kaike or somebody like that. But the World Finals is going to play a big role in this, I feel like, too. The reality of it is, is recency bias is going to play a factor in this deal. So if somebody steps out there and has a bad World Finals, they might fall down the board a little bit. Or if somebody that's surprising does really good, now all of a sudden you're going to have to take a second look at them and see, well, maybe we need to go get them higher than we thought we would. I'm not going to get too crazy right now as far as who I think is going to go to what team. Like That's going to be really hard to tell. Like I said, until the World Finals are over, that's just hard to predict. But what I will say is when you look at these coaches, I think there's some themes that you can find just knowing a little bit about the coach's personality. So like J.W. Hart, for example, the Kansas City outlaw coach, if he doesn't feel like a guy is going to try his guts out every time or if he's going to jack around in the buck and shoot, not really want to get out on every bull he gets on, I don't expect J.W. to want him on his team. I'm with you there, Coop. To back up just a hair, because I don't know, because I haven't been in in that realm where I follow other sports and drafts and things, does it tell you how many rounds there will be as far as in the draft total rounds? Yes, there's going to be five rounds in this initial draft. And then I believe I read in sometime in early June, I think, there's going to be a supplemental draft to fill out the seven, the other two riders. There'll be seven riders on a roster at a time, from what I understand. What do you think about uh, re- the return of the Cherokee kid, Ryan Dirt Eater? I knew him really well for a long time so I always used to say it's Ryan we hope he don't live up to his last name especially in his line of work dirt eater but uh what what do you think about his return and looking like Cooper Davis might even have declared for the draft so I'm actually just looking at that list right now and Cooper Davis did indeed declare for the draft uh going back to dirt eater I think he could be a huge help for a team those veteran type guys are going to help your younger riders that have talent, but maybe just need some seasoning out a lot. And I think that's where their role is going to be. And I'm not knocking his riding at all, but I don't think anybody can argue that the version of Ryan Dirt Eater you're probably going to get this year is going to be a little different than it was back in 2015, 2016. I mean, father time is undefeated at the end of the day, but I still think he's going to go out there and get his, get bulls road. But I think the locker room presence and really helping those younger guys along is where they provide value to a franchise. And I think every team's probably going to try to go get a guy like that. An older guy that's been there, done that, seen it all, been through it all. They know exactly what these kids are going through. And why wouldn't you? I think it's nothing but a positive. And same thing there for Cooper Davis, just because, you know, he's been on Team USA for the Global Cup and, I'm pretty sure Ryan Dirt Eater's been on the Wolves at some point for the Global Cup. And so you want guys with team experience if you can get them too. I think that would be a huge leg up just to help the whole process develop easier for the younger guys and the newer guys that are not used to that process. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's going to play a factor in it. But at the end of the day, it's coming. To, it's going to come down to who's riding well right now and who's not. I think that's going to matter more than necessarily prior team experience. And the reality of it is if you've had team experience on a global cup, you probably ride really good anyways. So you're probably pretty much a guaranteed draft pick most likely anyways at that point. So I don't see that playing necessarily a a crucial role. If you have a former global cup rider and a guy who's never been on a global cup team ranked pretty similarly and you're choosing between the two, that could be a tiebreaker. But overall, I don't see that being a huge, a huge thing. Just because, like I said, I think if you've been on a global cup team, you're dang near guaranteed to be a draft pick. I feel like. 
Do you know, have they announced if, if it's going to be on like Pluto TV or anything like that? So if you're wanting to tune into the draft and you're not going to be in Fort Worth, the 2022 PBR Team Series draft is going to be on May 23rd at Texas Live over in Arlington there. That's a cool little spot. It starts at 6 p.m. I do know it is going to be broadcast on Pluto TV, and I'm excited for it. If you're a sports fan, especially an NFL fan, the NFL draft just got over here a couple weeks ago, and NFL fans go crazy for that. I mean, it's one of the biggest events of the offseason every year, probably the biggest outside of the very early stages of free agency. And NFL fans go crazy for this. So this is a huge opportunity for the PBR to really broadcast that in the same way and give bull riding fans that experience with the draft. So I'm really excited about it being televised. It's probably hard to pick your favorite team until you really see what riders they have. But I'm just excited to see how it's going to shake out. I think there's going to be some wild stuff that goes down in this draft. There's going to be some surprise picks for sure. So I'm really excited to watch it. And I think everybody else should be too. But you got any closing thoughts before we get out of here? Yes, sir. Um, just want to thank everybody for listening and and for being patient with us. And, and I hope you're enjoying our content. We've been putting out some some newer content that we wouldn't typically put out that had to do with team pinning and some other things like that. And I hope you all enjoy that too. And if you all want us to bring more stuff like that to our podcast, you got to let us know because we want to make it as good for you as we possibly can. But the most important thing that I want you all to learn from me ever is that always be thankful for the one and only true look God above those beside you in the future before you and Cooper, the floor is yours, bud. Thanks James back at you. And yeah, I agree guys. Let us know what you thought of the newer content. You know, that's a unique opportunity with Cody Wood. And if you're in the Fort Worth area this coming weekend, definitely get your butt over there. Cause I think it's going to be one heck of a, one heck of a weekend down here in Fort Worth for sure. Um, yeah, we've been trying some new stuff out. So definitely go over and check out our YouTube. We've got some new stuff over there as well as we set up a TikTok. So we've got a couple of TikToks up as well. And uh, check those out. They're both, or the TikTok is at from the back pens. It's the same as the Instagram. So if you're on TikTok, like a lot of people are, go ahead and check it out. And like James said, feel free to give us input anytime. Message us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, email. It doesn't matter. We're open to feedback. We want it to be as good of an experience as it can be for the listeners as possible. So with that being said, you can find us at from the back pens on Instagram and TikTok, from the back pens on Facebook and YouTube, as well as my email, Cooper C O O P E R from the back pens at gmail.com. You can find Rank Ride Fantasy at www.rankridefantasy.com at Rank Ride Fantasy on Instagram. Rank Ride on Facebook, at Rank Ride on TikTok, and Rank Ride TV on YouTube. And don't be afraid to go check out the USTPA either. Get the rundown on their event that starts Thursday, the team penning and the bull bash and team penning finale this coming weekend. You can find them at USTPA.com or on their social media platforms, which I will link in the description below. But yeah, it's going to be a busy week for me down here. We wanted to get recorded early because my schedule will be pretty busy down here and it's just going to be tough to really carve out time once we get rolling, but we're going to be bucking bulls come Friday in the Dickies arena and it's going to be a dang good time. Make sure you guys watch, get entered up in the rank ride contest and until next time, have a great one and come back and visit us again from the back pins. 